Okay, so one of the things that we want to do now is we want to get into um, the frontal bone. And what's important about the frontal bone, if you imagine that everything is, uh, that things are hanging down from there, like the, the maxillae hang from this frontal bone, you, you know a frontal bone hold, but we're going to do a different one now. That frontal bone hold that we're going to do at this point is going to be a little bit different. It's also great for tuning into uh, Sutherland's fulcrum and the reciprocal tension membrane. And once you learn this particular handhold, you will be in an excellent position to, again, look at the reciprocal tension membrane, the fox and the tentorium, and the whole spinal cord and how it attaches at the sacrum and dynamics that are uh, throughout this entire system. The, that also are, are going to be impacted by this phenobasilar joint. So what I want you to do is just start with any of the vault holds that you uh, have done before, or you can, if you're listening to this and you're looking at the SBJ as we move into this in the DVD series, that's fine. You can start with Becker's hold, or you can start with Sutherland's hold, or you can start with any uh, vault hold that you like. So what we're going to do is we're going to move from... Uh, after maybe five minutes or so uh, of palpating and, and watching this movement now at the frontal bone, what we're going to do is we're going to take our hands and we're going to use either the left or the right hand. And, and this is a very, very important point here. And I'm hoping that you got this from the first series. But this particular handhold I think is of utmost important that your elbows are well supported in whatever way works for you because the one hand, the one hand that's palping the frontal bone, will most likely be up in the air. In order to do that, we don't want any tension placed in the system whatsoever. So make sure that when you are learning this, and we're going to do this now, that you are very, very well supported in your elbows. Hopefully you have a table that does that for you, but even so, the bottom hand may be supported, but the top hand is going to need a pillow or some something else to support it. So what you're going to do is left or right hand is going to be in... Uh, of a classic occipital cradle, except it's going to do it all by itself now. Instead of two hands underneath there, you're going to find the position that accesses the most uh, tissue available to you, the most balanced tissue available to you of the occipital bone. Now, whichever hand that you use, what's important for you to do at this point is to just take the other hand and take your fingers and spread them as comfortably as you can, and the index fingers are just going to go over the edge of the orbital uh, aspects of the frontal bone, the eyes, just over that edge there, and then just spread that as comfortably as you can. And you want the heels to, of your hands to be as in as much a direct line as possible without creating a lot of tension, obviously, in order to do that. So what I want you to do is I just want you to hold that frontal occipital hold and tune into this phenobasilar joint again now uh, with this hold. 